It is one of the most damning indictments we've ever seen of the Walt Disney Company in its modern incarnation. The son of the original director for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Walt's very fantastic classic, which is timeless and remains one of the most important films not only in the company's history, but in the history of film itself. Well, he is out there with a scathing rebuke of Bob Iger's modern Disney, of Rachel Zegler's disparaging of the timeless classic. And folks, we're here to tell you it does not get any closer to Walt himself coming out and saying, I stand against what Disney is doing today. All right, folks, welcome back to another wonderful day here on the WDW Pro channel. It is a joy, as always, to be joined by you, and as well, we are joined today by uh, Mr. H Reviews. Sir, welcome back to the channel. This is the second time, and I have to say that it's an honor each and every time. Nice to be here. Nice to be invited. Always good to be here. Well, let's take on a, a jolly topic as well, and our <laughs> jolly topic for the day is... This one out of the Daily Mail by Christian Oliver. My father and Walt would be turning in their graves. Son of original Snow White director blasts pathetic new version starring Rachel Zegler and accuses radical Disney of having no respect for the classics. Now, folks, as we get into this, let me tell you, this reminds me quite a bit of the interview that we did just before her passing of Valerie Stewart, a wonderful lady, babysat by uh, Ella Fitzgerald, true Hollywood royalty. She came on the channel and talked to us about her father's experience working for the Disney company, her father, of course, being the infamous voice actor of uh, the golden era. He played Br'er Bear, and she came on and said, this is not the company that Walt was in charge of. They don't act that way anymore. And here we have again, and I, I think this is as close as you can get to Walt. This is the son of the director for the original film. It's amazing that he's still alive and that he is still providing us with this take. Let's let's get into it, and Nate, I want your take as well. David Hand rebuked Disney Studios for pursuing an insulting and woke remake. The director's son said the movie sought to destroy its 1937 predecessor. Uh, what a thing that we're in an era now where Disney is attempting, according to the son of the director, to destroy the very film that built the entire company. It's a great metaphor for wokeism. The son of the original Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs director has blasted Disney's pathetic live-action radical remake of the movie, accusing the company of having no respect for classics. David Hand, 91, whose father of the same name directed the original 1937 animation, rebuked Walt Disney Studios for pursuing an insulting and woke remake of the movie that sought to destroy its predecessor. He said the new ad adaptation would have both his father and Walt Disney himself turning in their graves as he slammed the upcoming movie star and Rachel Zegler as the titular character. This is just the latest. Disney remaking a long string of live-action reimaginings that has seen 20th century classic animations rewritten for today's audience. It comes after several videos emerged online of Zegler, 22, trashing the original movie, saying she hated it and thought it was extremely dated. Nate, what do you make of the idea that Disney has brought on an actress who is uh, declaring that she hates the very characters who hold up the pillars of the, the company's headquarters? Do you think that this is a an official talking point that they've given to her, or do you do you think she's gone rogue? No, I, this is uh, unequivocally an official talking point uh, from Disney. Uh, it has to be. Um, these people are well trained. Hate bait marketing is 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 a new massive thing. Say new, sort of on the rise now. Anyway, it has been for quite some time. Um, I, I'd say unequivocally, it's a talking point. It's a dumb talking point from the studio. But as you highlighted. It, it, it's a great sort of metaphor for wokeism in general, you know, tearing down the old in with the new, all oh, that old stuff, it's dated, it's not good, you know, those values aren't good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yet, you know, as you said, and as um, the son of the original director is, is very eloquently putting, this is the movie. This was the first feature animation that Disney made. It's the, it is their... It is what built the company. He, he bet the farm the on it, on Nate. He, he, he cared so much about this story that this was the story selected to bet everything he had. Had it not yeah. worked out and there was no there was no guarantee that it would work, then he goes <laughs> back to being someone that not even remembered in history. So, Nate, let me <laughs> ask you this question. It, I mean, this is the big one in my opinion. How can you attack the man's most premier work that he ever did without attacking the man? Is this not an attack on Walt? Well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, you'd think it would be. I mean, it is, isn't it, really? If you're looking at it, you know, Walt Disney, bet the company on it, 
you know, and, and then you'll say, well, this is dated now. But that's wokeism in general, isn't it? That's that sort of attitude that these very young people have is that everything that came before is bad, it's not good, et cetera, et cetera. It is that tearing down of, of everything. So, and they're so unashamed of it as well. I mean, you 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 could sit there and say that it's an attack and it is this, and, uh, and you're right. And you'd say it to them and they're like, yeah, so if you care. they don't care. It's insane. Right. Absolutely Let the past insane. die, kill it if you have to. We've heard it all before. Uh, but exactly uh, Mr. That. Hand, Mr. Hand, who has the same name as his father, uh, he, he's quite with it, though. Let me tell you what he has to say about it. He told the Tele Telegraph Legend. that many younger people had not even seen the film, and so they don't know what they're talking about. He said yeah. their views misunderstand the film. He said the information known so far about the new movie, set to be released in March of 2024, that's going to go well, was proving to be a whole different concept. And here's his quote. <laughs> I know my dad and Walt would also very much disagree with it, he told the publication, adding that the first movie was produced in good taste. Mr. Hand yeah. added that it was pathetic that people needed to feel animosity towards the picture, which is soon approaching nine decades old. Now, partly what I think is so fascinating about this, of course, is that Disney is in the midst of celebrating 100 years. I know, but it's so funny. It's the at worst, the same time, they're the defiling worst, their first worst, movie. Yeah. <laughs> what a worst, time to do this. It's, it's twofold, isn't it? So they celebrate 100 years, which is hilarious because it comes up on every new movie from them this year. 100 years celebration absolute gold and they're having some of the worst time possible they're being sued left right and center and they're defiling as you say their first movie but it, it's such a shame i mean at the core and 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 he's completely correct is that everyone talking about the movie seemingly hasn't even watched it i mean calling the prince a stalker that's a massive massive disingenuous statement to make saying that you know i uh, she doesn't need this she wants to these traditional old, you know, the, the I say old school, they're not. Those core values that that film purports and sort of pushes and stuff are timeless. And that's why it's a classic, because it's timeless. You know, like you can't, you can't one up timeless, good morals and good values. You can never one up that. People try, and that's why they try to tear it down instead. But you can't one up it. And yeah, it's just well. I, th I think that's a great this. point. You know, you, they try to tear it down because they cannot overcome it, and so rather than produce something that's better, you tear down that which is your obstacle. But uh, Nate, let me ask you. Uh, and this is this is humorous, but I mean it in all seriousness. Do you think that Rachel Zegler, this young twenty-two-year-old woman who has she has been in many films that they were supposed to be successful and then they're flops? <laughs> Do you think that she is vying to become the next Brie Larson? And I, I mean this in all seriousness. <laughs> she is very quickly overtaking Brie Larson as the yeah. actress that, you know, is, is the most vitriolic. Most insufferable, yeah. So I, it, that's become a bit of a bit on my channel. Who's the most insufferable woman in Hollywood? And I, you know, I say like, how is it Amber Heard? Is it Brie? Well, currently, you I better check and see if Rachel Zegler is a subscriber. <laughs> I think I think she does hold that title now. Rachel Zegler does hold the title of one of the most insufferable women in Hollywood. You've inspired uh, because, her. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? Is, is that, hate, that hate marketing is so prevalent now. It is talking points from Disney. They are singing from the same hymn sheet. They are doing the same playbook. Um, and there's no lessons being learned either, which is so tragic. Because she did this before, she she put Jeremy Renner on blast and called him every name under the sun, and then she, she attacked got, Gina Carano too, Nate. Yeah, and she got backlash from it, and she released a video. The video that was circulating recently was actually old video. It's like a year old of her crying, and it's like, but you didn't learn your lesson. You didn't right. think before you spoke. There's no lesson learned here, you know. Like, and and people saying she's a child. She's not a child. She's 22. It's not a child. It's not a child where I come from. I think from. it's, it's because child she's childlike. Yeah, but that's just such a it, 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 it's such a a wishy washy way to shrug it off and go. Yeah, I'm oh, with her you. Actions are fine. It's like no, it's not. When I was 22, I wasn't that much of a butthole, right? And then you compare <laughs> other people <laughs> in the much. industry, that much, you know. <laughs> but then you compare other people in the industry. General Tager, that is younger than Rachel Zegler incredibly professional knows exactly what to say how to say it, handles herself with expertise yes and, and you have to think you know why would the studios now not be seeking out a jenna ortega 
and perhaps uh, perhaps Beetlejuice 2 will be another launching point for her career. She seems to do exceedingly well with everything she does, but let's take a look mm. at somebody else who, is, who has done exceedingly well, this being David Hand, the original director for Snow White, starts off his career in 1926, The Cat's That's Nine amazing. Lives, The Tale of the Monkey, Trader Mickey, keeps going. I mean, going to Snow White was not even close to his first thing that he was mm. doing. And so you get all the way up here to, uh, let's see, we skipped it, 1937, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But he also does Bambi as the supervising director. And then we have uh, in here Fantasia as well. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I think, I think what's so interesting there is just how many are directly associated with Disney. They're, they're, they're basically all Disney, right? So again, if someone uh, is, is sort of... If someone's got, the, if someone's qualified to discuss this, it would obviously be the man's son, right, to discuss this and kind of talk about it. I mean, so, th so then, let me ask you this, Nate. Um, this seems to me to be as close as you could possibly ever get to Walt himself condemning what mm. Disney has been up to. Uh, do you think? And I, I think I know your answer, but do you think that this will be a wake up call finally to this company, to Bob Iger, that they need to step back? If the if the last <sighs> few people who have a direct connection to Walt say he would despise what you're doing. Is it a wake-up call or no? Well, so uh, your question is predicated on... The question is predicated on the fact that Bob Iger cares about Walt and the legacy and what Disney had initially stood for, which I, which I think he fundamentally doesn't. And I think that's important to take a look at, isn't it? Is that Bob Iger is very much himself i want to i want to make a name for myself so i don't think it will be a wake-up call in the respect uh of the question being asked about walt would it be a wake-up call financially speaking economically speaking it's difficult to say because you'd think little mermaid was going to be a wake-up call it hasn't been you think this right now would be a wake-up call and they'd muzzle Rachel Zegler because they can they they can there's contracts which are applied to these kind of uh, PR campaigns you say anything that damages the the movie etc you can be deducted x y and z on the back end that's part of Hollywood so no I don't think so because I think this is all <laughs> on script because if if because th there are mechanisms that you know a studio can trigger to muzzle their talent and if they haven't triggered them already, which they haven't, I would say no, unless and, and unless they have triggered it, and that's why we've seen nothing new, and that's why maybe Rachel Zegler was seen on the picket lines saying, "Well, if I'm going to be in a dress for eight hours, I demand to be paid for every hour that the movie streamed." She may, this is kind of you know playing devil's advocate, she may have been on script for Disney. Because all those interviews that were released were a few years ago, right? And then they saw the backlash to it, or they saw the interviews were like, oh, actually, that comes across real bad. Stop it. And now she's she's annoyed that she's had to stop it. And then that's why she's doing this on the picket lines with the um, SAG after strikes. Maybe. That's a pie-in-the-sky theory. Right. So, the idea that uh, she, you know, if they made her stop poisoning one well, she just goes to a different well to continue on. Yeah. They uh, they say now that that Disney may actually have to bring in a crisis management team. I saw that. I'd, I'd like to help them save at least half a million dollars, guys. All you need is for Rachel Zegler to put out a statement that says, <sighs> "Sometimes I speak freely. I'm young. I'm carefree, and sometimes I'm misunderstood. I respect Snow White. I love the original movie, and I'm so honored to get to play it and respect the legacy of Walt." That's there. You go, folks. Yeah. And that would save the, this production greatly, although the Dirty Hippies are there, there to uh, bring you back down again as we get to it. But Nate, Seven thank you bandits. so much for being a part of the video today and joining the channel yet again to uh, explain entertainment and keep people ahead of the culture curve. It seems a little silly because you are such a star here on YouTube, but please, for those who don't know, share oh, with us. Oh. Uh, where can we find you on this great big beautiful web? <laughs> Not at all a star. You're very, very kind. Not at all a star. Um, happy to be it. Uh, so you can find me over on Mist H Reviews, over on obviously YouTube um, and uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and also uh, I run a podcast, The H Cast, uh, which we need to get you on, actually. Would love uh, it. Which you can take a look at on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, as well. But yeah, Mist H Reviews. Fantastic. And uh Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, 
And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. The conversation here has come to a close. The commentary begins. Drop a comment down below. We cover your comments. We care about what you think. We read and we respond. And folks, don't forget to click on that link to Mr. H Reviews down there in the video description so that you can go subscribe to more excellent content and takes just like this. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, don't be anything like Rachel Zegler, and keep having fun. Say it ain't so. This just in. Disney lost money on enough for moving. Why, that can't be. I thought that John Lasseter fella over at Pixar was cranking out the latest hits and Marvel was unstoppable and Disney princesses were a thing and Star Wars was a multi-billion dollar money-making franchise. I overheard you talking about Disney and wanted to let you know you're really behind the ball. If you were uh, getting great articles from thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel, you'd actually be ahead of the culture curve and have entertainment explained. <laughs>